Good morning and welcome Little Chapel Church Online. Guys, we are so thrilled to be able to come together and worship with you in your homes, in your rooms, right where you are. We want to start off by just saying a big Happy Father's Day to all of you amazing dads out there. What a privilege it is to be called to fatherhood, to be able to raise up young boys and girls, young men and women for the Lord in order to instill in them the godly principles that the Lord has instructed us to do. We are so thankful for each of you. You play such a vital role in the shaping and forming of your kids' lives. And I know it's not without a lot of diligent work. So we just want to say a very big Happy Father's Day to all of you. So get ready as we continue in the Kingdom Come series with a message from Pastor Ronnie entitled, The Kingdom Through You. So excited for what God is doing in and through your life, praying for you and your families, and we'll see you soon. Good morning. How's everyone doing? That's good. We're here. We're here. So... Will you stand with us? We're going to get ready and worship the Lord. Lord, we just thank you for this day. Lord, we just thank you for this time that we could come and that we could worship you. Lord, we say that you are worthy to receive all honor and all glory. And so we bless you in this place. And we ask that your Holy Spirit would fall this morning as we worship you. We love you. We give you praise. And it's in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Let's worship the Lord. Just take a moment as we just worship the Lord in this time. And let's just begin to declare this over our situations in our life. Because there is no one that can stop the Lord God Almighty who we serve. And so, Lord, we declare this over our lives, over situations in our lives. Lord, we declare it over our country. Lord, we declare it over anyone who would stand in your way that there is no one who can stop the Lord Almighty because you know the beginning from the end. Lord, and we bless you. We bless this. So we sing this as a declaration now. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? 
Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? in person or you're watching online, thank you for joining us. If this is your first time here or you would just like more information about what Little Chapel Church has to offer, you can text the word welcome to this number, 618-777-6779. We also want to let you know that there are several ways that you can worship the Lord through giving. We have buckets in the back of the sanctuary. You can give online on our website, on our app, or you can text to give to LCCIL to the number 77977, or if you're watching from home, you can mail your gift in to the address that is on the screen. And lastly, we want to let you know about some serving opportunities that we have. We've got two great things going on. Um, first of all, on Mondays, we are helping to run a location for the summer food program in Galatia. And also, on Fridays, we are doing a produce and dairy giveaway been a great opportunity. We've been giving away a thousand boxes every Friday. Um, just a really awesome opportunity to get to know people in the community and to bless them and to share the love of Jesus with them. So if you would like more information about those opportunities, you can text the word serve to our number again, 618-777-6779, and we will text information to you. Thank you again for being with us this morning. God bless you and have a great day. Lord, we just thank you for that we could come and that we could worship you this morning. Yes. Yes. Lord, we set our hearts on you this morning. Yes. Lord, we bless you. As you just stand with us, just I just want us to sing of the of the faithfulness of Jesus. Lord, we say that. You are good, but we thank you. We thank you. But we thank you that you have set people free in this house this morning. Lord, we thank you that you have healed people in this house this morning. And Lord, we're asking you to do it again in this place this morning. Lord, I pray that, that even as we go through this week, that we would begin to seek you in a deeper way, Lord, that we would run after you and after your heart. Just in your own words, begin to bless the Lord, just to thank him for all of the good things he's done. Without all 
Just take this moment. I just feel that we need to just bless the Lord. Lord, as we sing this declaration again, Lord, I pray that it would become a reality to our hearts. Lord, that we would cry out, Lord, as, as one who is longing for you. Lord, even so come, Lord, that we would cry out to you, that you would move upon a nation, Lord, that you would move upon a community, on a region, Lord, that you would move upon a church. Lord, this is our cry to you, that all the earth, all the earth would shout your name, Lord, that they would fall before you. Lord, because one day we will. Lord, in that day when we can say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty and worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Let's just lift our praises to the Lord. Lord, we exalt you. We exalt you.
I'm so grateful for the goodness of the Lord this morning. I'm so great, grateful that there is nothing impossible for Him. Amen. I'm so grateful that no matter what your circumstance, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you need this morning, we serve a great God. And we serve a God that is that, 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 that there is nothing impossible for Him. So no matter what you brought in here this morning, I want you to know that the one that you are serving, the one that you are worshiping, the one that is residing inside of you, there is no mountain that he cannot move. There is no hill that cannot be moved by the power and the mighty of God. And I don't know, I don't, you know, and this is the time that we can bring our requests and our, and our situations before the Lord. This is the time that we can give him praise and give him glory. And you're here this morning, you say, you know what, Ronnie, there's things that I'm going through. There's things that I'm facing this, this morning. There's things that are before me that I'm not sure that, uh, that, that, uh, that, that there will ever be an answer for. I, you know, I have, I have issues. I, have, I need God's hand in my life. I need healing this morning. Why not today be that day? Why not this time be that time? Why not, as the presence of God begin to move in this place, He brings healing and restoration, means, brings mending to relationships that need to be mended. And if you're here this morning, say, you know, Ron, I'm, I'm burdened. I'm heavy, burdened with a the burden within my heart. And you have, would you lift me up in prayer? If that's you this morning, would you just lift up your hand up and just acknowledge this morning, hey, I need prayer this morning. Yeah, okay. Now, I know this morning we can't uh, gather around you, I guess, but, uh, you know, or lay our hands upon you, right? But I do know, I do know that God will flow through us and God will touch each and every need that we have. So would you pray with me? And even as our gentleman, if you saw a hand that was raised, would you just stretch out your hand towards them and begin to, begin to pray for them? Let's lift them up in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, God, you know each and every request. God, you know each and every situation. And sometimes, God, we believe that these situations, God, and these requests are much bigger than you. God, they just seem so great. God, they take up so much, uh, so much of our time. They take up so much of our worry. God, they bring so much fear in our life. And God, we're tired of it. And we sing a song like this of how great you are. And God, we, we, we now acknowledge, Lord, with all of our heart, with all of our being, being, God, that you're more greater than any situation. God, that you're more greater than any sickness. God, you're more greater than, than any division, Lord. God, that you desire to be, bring healing in this place this morning. God, that you desire to bring restoration in this place this morning. God, as you begin to flow, as you begin to move, as your spirit begins to fall, Lord, I believe, Lord, that you begin to touch right now in Jesus' name. So I pray for healing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I pray for, I pray for doors that would be open to those, God, that, that would otherwise be closed, but because of your favor that is upon them, because your grace that is upon them, because of who they are, whose they are, God, that your favor uh, flows in around and, and through them, Lord, that those doors of finances and, and employment, God, will begin to be open, Lord, and that you begin to shower upon them all that, you, all that they need. And when it all comes down to it, Lord, when it all comes down to it, God, when we begin to see all these other things, Lord, honestly, really, God, all we really need is, is you, Lord. All we really need is you. And to know that I'm in the right standings with you, God, is all I need. Brings me peace in my life, I pray. So, Lord God, we love you and we thank you, God, and we give you the praise and the glory this morning. And, God, as we begin to revisit this song once again, God, again, let it just penetrate our hearts once again. Let it just fill our spirit once again to acknowledge how good and great you are. God, how good and great you are. God, that nothing in this world, God, deserves any, of, any praise or any adoration. But God, you are worthy of it because of how good and great you are. Would you sing with us this morning one more time?
Father God, you deserve, like I said, all of our adoration and praise this morning. No one else deserves any attention this morning. No one else deserves uh, to be lifted up. But God, you, des you deserve to be lifted up. God, you deserve all of our attention this morning. God, you deserve all of our focus this, this morning. God, so I pray, God, that we would continue to get out of the way. So God, that you can be seen. God, that you can be shown, I pray. God, you're the name that we lifted up on. God, you're the name we ba uh, uh, ba uh, uh, banner around, God. You're the banner that we lifted up on high, God. God, we love you and we praise you. And God, we pray that you would have your will in this place this morning. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. So good to have you guys here this morning. Man, you, you, you came to a, a great morning. We had fun in first service. It was, who would have thought that we would have said that in first service, right? I grew up in a church that had multiple services, and quite frankly, I like the fact that we have one service here at Little Chapel Church. I think it's really good. Um, uh, and so uh, I'm looking forward to when we are able to get back to one service, and it's going to be really quickly here. Uh, shortly, I, I believe, without a doubt. And are you excited about that as well, huh? Yeah. All right. Five people. That's good. Um, so uh, we won't take, no. So uh, uh, so we are, we're gearing for, ready for that. And so we had a great time in first service. And you guys came and we have a, an incredible treat for you. I mean, it's going to challenge you tremendously this morning. Uh, what you're about ready to see and, and hear I know that's been challenged me in, 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 in my life, in our family life as well, okay? So if you have kids, uh, small kids, you, uh, prepare to be amazed. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I'm going to welcome Graham. Graham up here with his dad. I need a mic. This is Graham Hossman. Graham, are you ready? You did an incredible job last time. You want this mic? Okay, here you go, buddy. It's on. All right, so this is Andrew, uh, his dad, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. His dad. And uh, so go ahead, Graham. I'm Father, but our in heaven, I'll be my name, my kingdom come. I will be done as earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. We forgive those who trespass against us. But lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Hey, give him a hand. <laughs> you did a good job. Oh. Didn't he do great? Come on, church, give him a hand. Didn't he do great? <laughs> Jennifer and uh, Andrew there, they are doing a tremendous job raising Graham. Wouldn't you, say, wouldn't you agree with that this morning? They are, uh, I tell you what, I told Bethany that, that we, we need to step it up. We need to step it up. I told her, I said, hey, our, we have Gavin and Libby, they're five years old. Uh, and they're not able to do that. So I felt like a big failure this morning. Um, I thought, man, I'm a failure as a father, and I'm just not doing the job as a spiritual leader in my house. Right, Gary? Gary's like, <laughs> that's, you know, I told Bethany, you need to do better. Right? <laughs> Come on, you need to do better, you know, and, sh and she goes, yes, I agree, I need to do better. No, I was reminded by a 
Ladies and gentlemen, it's your job to do that as a spiritual father. It's your job to do that, and I agree. It's my job. And uh, But, man, I appreciate them and appreciate Graham for, for sticking around for, for two services to lead us in the Lord's Prayer. And part of that prayer is something that that uh, is part of our message here tonight, in fact, uh, this morning. In fact, it's part of the series. It's kingdom, uh, kingdom come, you know. Let his kingdom come and to, to let his will be, be done. And this is this kingdom come principle, this is something that Jesus taught. I mean, if you look at the New Testament, you begin to see over and over again, incidents after incidents, where Jesus taught this. He spoke this. Not only taught it, spoke it, but he modeled it even for our own lives. He healed the sick and he and he touched those that were uh, lame and he forgave those and he was around those that maybe no one else wanted to be 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 around they were considered outcasts and maybe the unlovable but he but he taught gentleness and kindness and meekness and mercy and these are the things that he showed us as a church and as an individuals that these are the things that we ought to be doing as well so even as i begin to share this message with you this morning is that even as I share this, sometimes even in the midst of this, because I know sometimes, man, it's going to hit home because I know it has hit home with me. It's going to challenge you because I know it has challenged me tremendously. Many times in this time, as we begin to hear this, a lot of times what we do is this. Well, that's their problem and not necessarily my problem. Have you ever done that before? Have you ever done that where, where you're like listening to a message and you go, man, I wish so-and-so was here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you remember their name, and go, man, so-and-so really needs to hear this message, because man, if they heard this message, then, you know, God would really get a hold of them, and, and really change their heart, and maybe their life, and, uh, you know, and, and everything will be good, you know, and all of a sudden, you stop applying it to your life, and you're just thinking about how quickly I can get the CD, you know, so I can pass it on, or quickly that I could you know, maybe uh, uh, plant a couple seeds like you really miss it this Sunday. You should go and check it out online and look, look at the message. It was good. So sometimes in, in these types of talks and these types of messages, as we begin to look at God's word, we begin to think, hey, well, that's not, that's not me. That's, that's someone else. It's so easy to deal with someone else's issues rather than deal, dealing with ours. So. But when we begin to do that, we miss out on what, the God, what God has for us. When we begin to do that, when we give in to, to our fleshly desires, to our fleshly wants, when we begin to give in to these, these attributes, these things, it begins to showcase the enemy's kingdom rather than our kingdom. And as a result, the enemy wins. The enemy has victory. And that's the last thing we want is for the enemy to have victory in our life or victory around us. As we begin to, sh as we, as we not begin to showcase the kingdom of God, what the, what the, what we end up happening is this: we water down the gospel, we water down the change effect of the gospel in our life. And as we begin to water it down, it show, it doesn't showcase God's kingdom anymore. It showcases a very different kingdom. Our desire as believers, I believe, our desire is this, is to showcase God's kingdom, not our kingdom. So here is commission, or here, here is this verse we found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 38. It's a very popular text, and it's in the Gospels, and, and, and it's a, a section that's called the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus is teaching here, and he's teaching a very, you know, hard way of living. He's teaching a, a new way. He's, he's teaching something different. He's teaching something that's going to challenge us each and every day through every situation, through every uh, thing that we may fall into, especially when harm and, 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 and those types of things that will come against us. He's teaching us a very different way. And as you begin to look at these different sections in the, in the, uh, uh, Sermon on the Mount, many of them start off with this. You have heard that it was said. You've heard that it was said. 
And he says here in this section, it says, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. He says, you've heard that it said that an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Hey, that sounds great. I mean, even now we begin to hear that, say, well, that sounds, that sounds reasonable to me. That sounds reasonable to me because after all, man, if, if someone hurts me, if someone causes me pain, if someone says something bad about me, shouldn't it be my right to be able to say something bad about them? I mean, after all, I wasn't really doing very much. I was just kind of minding by my own business. This section right here, yeah, that sounds reasonable to me. An eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, tick for tat. If someone, hey, someone comes against you, guess what? You get to come against them. You get to come against them. But Jesus, of course, he has a different way. And he says this, but I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the also, turn, turn to him the other also. Really? <laughs> you know, I mean, do you, do you, you know, I know sometimes we read the Bible and we just kind of, you know, read it and, and, and maybe skip through it. But I tend to read it and I look at it and I go, really, if someone slaps me on the cheek, and, and, you know, I, I know. I haven't been slapped on the cheek very much, but I know it's not talking about specifically someone slapping on your cheek. I know it's someone that's coming into your space and and causing you a little bit of pain. Someone coming in my space and cause, causing me a little bit of discomfort. Someone coming coming in my space and I'm just minding my own business. Why are you starting that rumor about me? Why are you starting those the the, the the you know why are you saying those things about me? Why why are you talking about my family like that? Why are you doing Doing that. I understand that, and that's what Jesus is saying. Hey, if someone comes against you in those types of ways, what I want you to do is I want you to turn the other cheek. And if someone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to anyone who begs from you, and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. I mean, we look at this scripture right here, just this one scripture, and the Bible is, is, is filled with scriptures that are like this that will really test how we respond to people that are in the world, to how we respond to those that are around us. It's filled with things like this. I'm not saying that there's not a time to fight. And even as I begin, you know... It, even as this, there's something within us that rises up and says, nope, that's not me. Nope, that's not me. I guarantee you that if someone comes against me, guess what? I'm coming against them. If someone, if someone talks about me, guess what? I'm coming again. I'm going to talk about them. I'm going to let them have it. I mean, we, 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 Read these verses, and even down deep inside, we're like, no, no, no. But this is what Jesus is telling us. I'm going to tell you that there's a, there's a greater kingdom that, is, that God desires to usher in rather than our kingdom. Is there a time to fight? Is there a time to stand? Yes, there is. There's a great, there is a time to stand. There's a time to fight. There's a time that uh, uh, when, 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 when we need in the face of the enemy to stand and not back down. That when the enemy comes against us, we're no longer back and forward, but we're standing our ground and we're saying no to the enemy. No longer will you have victory in my life in this area. No longer will you have victory and unforgiveness in my life in this, in this time. No longer will you have victory. Is there a time to stand? Yes, there is a time to stand. Is there a time to pick up your sword and fight as believers? Yes, there is a time to do it. But here's the difference. One, we're talking about a fleshly desires. The other, we're talking about spiritual desires. Spiritual and fleshly are two different things. When you're talking about spiritual issues, you begin to fight. You fight with prayer, and you stand, and you don't back down. And you stand your ground, and you know, I am greater as he that is in me than he that is in this world. 
And even though these things of this world are going to hurt me, and even though things of this world, people will spit upon me, even though people in this world will ridicule me, even though I will face persecution in this world, those are fleshly things. And as those fleshly things come about it, Jesus calls me to live a different way. He calls me to respond in a different way. In a different way. Whenever we're harmed by others, man, it is a natural instinct, isn't it? To put harm in return. It's not normal human behavior to leave for joy when we're falsely accused. To turn the other cheek when we're struck upon. To carry an unjust load. An extra mile. To be gentle when we're treated harshly. But these are the things that Jesus teaches. These are the things that Jesus encourages us and tells us that if you want to usher in my kingdom here on this earth, if you want my kingdom to flow through me, these these are the things that need to be flowing through you each and every moment. Do you know that the, the greatest secret of strength in the kingdom of heaven is our gentleness and kindness? towards others. Gentleness is a great weapon. Kindness is a great weapon that we have. But when you're thinking about gentleness and you're thinking about kindness, it doesn't seem very powerful, does it? I mean, when I think about going to a battle, you know, I'm not thinking about pulling up a a little feather and and this is going to be my weapon. This little feather, this is going to be, this is what I'm going to fight with, a little feather here. I mean, when I'm going into battle, man, I want a, I want a sword, right? I want a shield. I want a, I want a bat. You know, I want, I want something. I want a gun. You know, with a lot of bullets. You know, I, I want something that, that, that when the enemy comes against me, that I'm going to be able to fight. That I'm going to be able to stand my ground. That I'm not going to be able to back down. And they're handing out weapons. And they're handing out weapons. It's my turn to get a weapon right? It's my turn to get a weapon. And and they go and they pull out this big chest and someone pulls out this huge feather and they say, here you go. Here's a feather for you. Now go fight. Go fight. It'll be good. Go fight. They're like, okay, I got my feather. (laughs) Woo! All right, let's go. I got my feather. What am I going to do with a feather? Tickle some noses. Make someone laugh to death. I don't know. And many times, even in gentleness and kindness, this is what we view it. We view gentleness and kindness kind of like a feather, don't we? We say, well, that's a form of weakness. It's not a form of strength. You see, when you, when we as Christians, when we as believers, when we give gentleness and mercy to our fellow man, to the people of this world, to the people to the people that have hurt us in response to rude and, and, and fleshly taunts and scorns. The kingdom of God, check this out, the kingdom of God, when we respond with kindness and gentleness the, to, to rude behavior and things like that, our, the kingdom of God now advances and the person of Jesus is made evident to this earth. Did you catch that? Not, not, not my will. Not, not my desires, not, not my wants, not my feelings, but, but whose? Man, I want God's kingdom. I want his will. I want his desires. I want his purposing to flow through me. And if I have to experience some rudeness, if I have to experience some pain, if I have to experience some hurt, for his kingdom to be flow through me, then let it be so. And as believers, that is our call. If you call yourself a Christ follower, if you call yourself a believer, guess what? We're in that boat together. Guess what? We're in it together. And as children of God, as ambassadors of the Lord, man, let us represent him well. 
Let people see that all that, uh, that all that we do, all that we say, all that we are, let it point to Him and Him only. Let us get ourselves out of the way. Isn't self-centeredness and self-seeking, isn't this the greatest weapon of hell? Isn't it the greatest weapon of hell? It's a weapon that the enemy uses to destroy the church, the church of Jesus Christ. But however, when we begin to respond as Christ wants us to respond, as we become moldable and shapeable in his hands, as we get out of the way, as we say, hey, it's no longer my will be done, but let his will be done through me on a world that desperately needs to know who he is, who Jesus is, who we serve. We need that. God has not called us to build our kingdom. Did you know that? He has not called us to build our kingdom, but he has called us, what? To advance his. Let his kingdom come, not ours. Let his kingdom come and not ours. Oh, Lord, I don't want my kingdom to be on the forefront. I don't want my kingdom to be on the forefront, but instead let my kingdom die so that his kingdom can be shown to a world that is around us all. So how do you advance his kingdom? Man, this is a great question. Will you allow God's kingdom to be, to be uh, a flow through you? Will you allow it? Yeah, it's a choice. It can be a choice. Will it be, will it be our kingdom or world, world, you know? Will it be our morals, our standards, our stands, our attributes, our passions? Will it be our kingdom or will we allow God's kingdom to flow through me? Will we allow his character, his passions, his desires, his will to flow through me? You see the difference? You say yes to Jesus, man. You're saying yes to his, his kingdom. His kingdom. Are we not the hands and feet of Jesus? Do we not represent him? Did he not go say, uh, did he not say, go forth and do what I have done? But yet I know that sometimes, man, I look at my life and I wonder, are, are these the things that you have, have done? <laughs> are these the things that you would have said with, through pain and rudeness and discomfort? Are these the things? And I find that, I find that the thing that is being fought and the things that I struggle with is point number one and it's my only point aren't you glad about that it's this if you're going to say yes to jesus if you said yes to him you're a follower of him you're his disciple right you lay down your rights you lay down your rights. I'm so glad no one is walking out right now. <laughs> Say, no, there's no way I'm going to lay down my rights. Are you serious, Ronnie? There's no way I am going to lay down my rights. Don't I have the right to feel the way that I want to feel? Don't I have the right to respond the way that, that, that I should respond in the face of difficulties? Don't I have the right to do that? Don't I have the right that when, when, when I'm just minding my own business, I'm just doing my own thing, and all of a sudden someone cuts me off, don't I have the right to honk my horn? Don't I have the right to do that? When you're a follower of Jesus, man, you lay down your rights and you say, no longer am I concerned with my, what my right is, but I'm more concerned with who Jesus is. And what he desires to do in my life. We cannot bring forth God's kingdom 
if we live in our own. To respond as Christ would is the greatest weapon that grace supplies. We have the ability to respond to every situation the way that Christ would respond. I mean, we can, we can discard it and say, I don't want it. I'm not going to live by that. Uh, God doesn't expect me, expect that, that much from me. Come on, that's going a little too far. He doesn't expect that from me. But, but guess what? As believers, we have to respond. If we're going to usher in his kingdom, we have to respond the way that Christ would respond. But if you take this grace that he has to offer and say, I can't do it. I can't do it, but I know that you can. I find it hard to live this way, but I know that you can through me. And I need what you have this morning. I need what you have. And if I'm going to live in hostile ter 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 territory, if I'm going to live in this sinful world this morning, if I'm going to live in an area that's filled with racism and, 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 and hurt and pain and, 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 and all these other things that are sinful, if I'm going to live in this world that is hostile towards my faith, if I'm going to live in this world and give glory to your name, I need you in me. I need your grace. I need the grace of God to work through me, through every situation that I face. Man, I look at, I look at David. I look at David and Saul. You remember the story? I hear in this story here, this, you know, Saul is, is a man of purity. You know, he's walking in step with, with, the, Lord, with the Lord, and he's walking in right standing with God, and and here is Saul. Saul is coming after David. He desires to kill him, and he desires to take him out. And, he's, and he has these uh, 3,000 men that are coming after David. He's coming after him. He's turned 3,000 men of Israel. You know, they're coming after him, and they're wanting to take him out. There's 21 uh, assassination attempts on David's life at this time. 21. God would call David the, the better man. He calls him the man after God's own heart. 21. And here is David's chance. He's being chased by a king and find him in a cave. He's in a cave with his men. And here he is. He's in this cave hiding out. And here he has this opportunity. Saul comes into this cave, and as he comes into this cave to take care of business. Is that a nice way to say it? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> right? He leaves his 30 men, uh, you, know, uh, you, know, uh, you know, down away from the cave, and he comes in this cave to, to take care of some business, right? To be alone. And here is David's chance. David's in the cave, the very cave that Saul went in. And here is David's opportunity. Here's his chance. The very man that desires to hurt him. The very man that desires to take him out. The very man that's been chasing him into a cave. A cave that he's not meant to be in. A cave that he's not destined to be in. A throne he's not destined to sit on, but he finds himself in a cave, in a place he's not supposed to be in because someone, because the king is chasing after him. So here he is. And here's Saul. And the Bible says this in, Saul, in 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 4, it says this. And the men of David said to him, all right, don't you love that? This is why it's so important. Even though David's men were great men, even though I'm sure there were godly men, the men that were follow, following David and they believed in the anointing that God had placed on David's life, these were great men. And the men of God said to him, man, this is why it's so important. 
you as a believer, make sure you gather around people around you that are like-minded. But even though you may have people around you that are like-minded, man, make sure that whatever they tell you, it's always confirmed by the Word of God. It's always confirmed by the Lord. And these men, they instructed and they said to David, here is the day of which the Lord said to you. Don't you love that? Here is your opportunity. Here is your chance. The day of the Lord. Here is your chance, your opportunity. Don't miss out. Here's the day of the Lord said to you, Behold, I will give your enemy into your hand, and you shall do with him as it shall seem good to you. To you. These were the men. They said, Hey, here is the day the Lord has said to you, the Lord said this, Before I will give you, get, will give your enemy into your hand. This is that day. This is that opportunity. There's been 21 uh, assassinations attempts. This is that time. Aren't you tired of running? Aren't you tired of backing down? Aren't you tired of, of, of wimping out? This is that time. This is that day. He's in the cave. His men are, are, are away. He's by himself. He's exposed. Maybe I shouldn't have said the exposed part. <laughs> oh, man. Right? And here he is. So then David arose stealthily, cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Did you catch it? Man, this, 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 this is the bait of the enemy. This is the bait of the enemy. Did you catch it? He stealthy, stealthily rose. Right? Instead of killing him, all he did was cut off a piece of his garment. Here's the bait. Be able to get back to the one that caused you so much difficulty. Here's your chance. Many of us, man, we're not going to get punched in the nose and, and you know, or, or those types of things. But, man, man, it sure feels good just to kind of cut a little piece of the garment off. Just a little piece. Just to show them, if I could take you out, I could take you out. You know, if I could, you know, you know, you know, I, I, you know, I could probably, I could probably take you out. You know, I know all your secrets. You know, I know all your, your issues. You know, I know the things that you've gone through in your life, you know. I know your problems. I know your hang-ups. But you know what? Uh, I'm going to refrain myself, and I'm just going to cut off a little bit. I'm just going to say a little bit, just so that you could know that I would have you. That I would get you. Just so that you can walk away feeling like, Man, I'm sure glad they didn't just let me have it. And here's David. He just cuts off a little bit, little bit just to let Saul know. But in that moment, in that moment, David realizes something. In that moment, David realizes, and here's the deal. Many times all the enemy needs in our life to keep the kingdom of God from flowing through us, all he needs is just a little bit of flesh is a little bit of our self-seeking, a, a little bit of our desires, a little bit of our, of our wants, just a little bit of self-glorification, just a little bit, not a whole lot, not as much as I could have took, but just a little bit, right? Just a little bit to keep the kingdom of God from actually flowing in and through your life. And we see later on in that verse, in that text, in verse 6, David said, and he said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my Lord, the Lord's anointed, to put out my hand against him, seeing he is the Lord's anointed. Even in that moment, he realized, I shouldn't even touch him. 
I shouldn't have just let him go. I shouldn't even cut a coat, uh, 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 a section off of his cloak. How many times have we done that? When we've said just a little bit, and we walk away and go, you know what? I probably shouldn't have said anything today. I probably shouldn't have responded in that way at all. I'm so grateful for forgiveness this morning. I'm so grateful that when we fail and we stumble and we make mistakes, I'm so grateful that when we allow just a little bit of flesh to rise up within us, our, our kingdom to rise up again within us, I'm so grateful for God's forgiveness. I'm so grateful that we can come in, in, to him boldly and say, Lord, man, I messed up. Will you forgive me? I'm so grateful for his forgiveness that he can bring us back into a right standing with him again. And because of David, because David honored Saul, David was honored, and a nation honored him. I look at Jonah. Remember the story of Jonah? Jonah, now, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah. You remember that? The word of the Lord came to Jonah. He said, rise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and call out against it, for the evil has come up before me. But Jonah rose and flee, flee to Tarshish. From the presence of the Lord. He fled from the presence of the Lord to Tarshish. He heard from God. He had a call to God to go. He had a call to affect a people. He had a commission, but yet Jonah chose to follow, chose to follow his desires, his wants, and what he saw that needed to take place. And he turned, he fled from the presence of the Lord. He fled. Now, sure, the Syrian army, sure, the Syrian kings were cruel and they were worthless, they were ruthless. Sure, man, if anyone deserved punishment, if anyone deserved uh, not to be saved, it would be Nineveh. This was a pagan nation, invaded the Israelites and, and, and took their stuff. And Jonah knew this, and Jonah's heart, and, you know, he had a heart that said, you know what, they don't deserve your, your, your forgiveness. They don't deserve to be saved. So what did he do? He fled the presence of the, God, of the Lord. And God got a hold of him, didn't he? Can I tell you that whenever you move outside of God's will, whenever you begin to move in a, in a realm that, that reinforces your flesh and reinforces your kingdom, reinforces your wants and your desires, can I tell you that God's going to get your attention somehow? He's going to get your attention. Because what? Because He desires for His kingdom to be flow through you. He desires to work through your life. And whenever you're moving outside of His will, outside of His calling, outside of his direction, he's going to get your attention. He's going to send something in your pathway into your world that's going to cause you to get focused back on him again. And he did that with Jonah. He did that with him. Fleeing from the Lord, man, it's never a good idea. Most of us, we like what God says until we're called, until we're called to action. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 and 44, it says this, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Man, that sounds great. Sounds great until you get that little nudge in Walmart. You know what I'm talking about? Sounds great when you're minding your own business and all of a sudden you get that little push. Sounds great until you're stopped at a stop sign and you're waiting for your turn, and you know it's your turn, and someone that just arrived decides to go in front of you. Really? You know, that sounds great. Sounds great until, until you're spit upon. It sounds great until you're ridiculed. It sounds great until you're, you, someone says something about you. It sounds great that when, when your, your kingdom is being, uh, 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 you know, uh, attacked, it sounds great. Sounds great until you uh, <laughs> reach for that, <laughs> reach for that last roll of toilet paper, and someone comes in and grabs it. <laughs> you know, ah, 
you know? I know we're past all that, but... Right? Sounds great! The Bible says, love your neighbor and hate... And, and he says, no, sorry. So you've heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your neighbor. But I say to you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. Jonah's obedience here was challenged, wasn't it? It was challenged. And his will was being attacked by the purpose of God. And what God was saying is this, Jonah, you're more compassionate about your need being met temporal than what I desire to meet eternal in the needs of others. And that's our focus. We got to get ourselves out of the way and stop thinking about temporal issues and start thinking about eternal needs for others. We change our mindset to eternal. No longer am I thinking term temporal anymore. No longer am I fighting against flesh and blood anymore. No longer am I going to fight with the, these, the, those that are in this world. No longer do I have issues with these that are in this world any longer. But I'm going to think I'm going to think eternal, that I'm going to allow His kingdom to be flow through me. I want His grace to flow through me. I want His mercy to, throw, to flow through me in all that I do. I want to lay down my rights so that His fruit of the Spirit can be displayed in my life. We bear fruit. And every time we bear fruit, every time we bear His fruit, it ushers in, it brings forth His kingdom. The fruit is Galatians is this. The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against these things there is no law. And those who belong to Jesus, to Christ Jesus. Now listen, those to that who belong to Christ Jesus, is that not me? Is that not you who are followers of Jesus? If you call yourself a follower, is that not you? Don't you sit in that chair. Those who belong into Christ Jesus have crucified the, the flesh. Has crucified the flesh. That it's no longer a priority in my life. Oh, let me be like Jesus who walked the Calvary Road and was spit upon and ridiculed and beaten and accused and strung up on a cross and nailed to a cross. Oh, let me be like him. That no, am I no longer concerned with my fleshly desires? Let me pick up my cross and follow him. It says Jesus has crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And even in that moment, did you catch it? That even in that moment, that even though Jesus was what? Full human and fully God, even though he was fully God, he was also human, and he suffered, and he, and he had the same uh, attributes and the same things, and he and he struggled and, and you know, had the same wills and, and things like that. And, but even in that moment, he said this. Did you catch it? Nevertheless, not my will be done, but yours be done. Oh, let us be more like Jesus. Let us be, be more like him where we say, no longer my will be done. No longer my wants be done. No longer even my passions be done. No longer my desires be done. But God, let your will be done in my life. And even hanging on that cross, even hanging on that cross, he hanging there, and even in the moment upon persecution, if there was anyone that, that, that had the right to call down heaven's to call down the angels from heaven down to this earth to begin to cause destruction. If there anyone that had the right to do that, wasn't that Jesus? Wasn't that him? But even in that moment, even in that moment, hanging on that cross, he said, not my will be done. 
Oh, he said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. There's a greater purpose that is being ushered in here. There's a greater kingdom that is being ushered in here. And can I tell you, friends, can I tell you, church, that your kingdom, that there's a greater kingdom that, is, that God desires to usher in here. And it's not your kingdom. It's his kingdom that he desires to usher in through you, through you. Out of all the, the things, out of all the, the, the avenues that he could have ushered in his kingdom, that he could, to, could have demonstrate his power. Do you know what he chooses to use? Do you know the avenue that he chooses to use now to demonstrate his kingdom? He chooses to use you, his believers. He chooses to use you to usher in his kingdom to a world that is desperately in need of knowing who he is. And throughout today's issues, throughout today's circumstances, you may say, man, where is God through all this? Can, can he just show up? Where is God through all this? Can I tell you, God is in you. Jesus is, is in you. You, you. you are the one that brings forth his heart to a world that needs to know it. That, aren't you the hands and feet of Jesus, of the master? You are the hands and feet of the master. Are we not, what, ambassadors? Do we not showcase his goodness and his mercy? So can we stand? Can we stand up and can we let God be, can we let God's light shine through us? Can we just let his light shine into a dark world and allow his light to shine through us in a dark world that others that may not know him come into a rela relationship with him, within him as we we'll lay down our rights, as we give up our kingdom and allow his kingdom to show through me. Oh, I want to display the fruit. I want to display the fruit. And yeah, man, I have messed up. Yeah, I've messed, I know. Man, I know you're thinking that I'm always perfect, right? Maybe you don't. But I have. Man, there's many times that I've allowed the, these fleshly desires that I have, I allow them to rise up and begin to control my thoughts and be control, control what I do. There's times that I look back on my life and I say, you know what? I wish, I wish I would have chose, I wish I would have chose differently. I wish I would respond differently, but instead I, I responded out of the flesh. I responded out of flesh. I didn't allow his kingdom to come through me. I didn't allow his forgiveness to, to be shown. I didn't allow his mercy to be shown. I didn't, I didn't show gentleness in a situation. I didn't show kindness in a situation. Oh, God, in those moments, as I begin to look at Scripture and continue to look at Scripture and continue to grow in those moments, I'm so thankful for forgiveness. I'm so great, thankful for restoration. I'm so thankful that I can come boldly before the Lord and say, man, I blew it. I'm so sorry. Man, now I need, I need to be in a right standing. I need to be. I need your grace to be shown through me. We stand up. We stand up. Let us stand and take part of his goodness and display the, the fruit of the Spirit in every area of our life. Is it hard? Yes, it's hard. But by the grace of God, he will give you the strength and the ability to do it. To do it. We move our kingdom out of the way. In fact, we step on it. We destroy it. We knock it over, and we allow God's kingdom to be shown through me. Man, I want his goodness to be shown through me. I want his mercy to be shown. I want his love to be shown. Man, where is God? Church, God is in you. He's in you. 
Let his kingdom reflect it in me. And let his kingdom be reflected in you. Let his kingdom come today. Today, I pray. Would you stand with me this morning? Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for this time. And God, I know that even in this word this morning, it can be challenging. I God, I know that even in this world, in this word this morning, Lord, we're going to move outside of this place. And God, it's going to be put to the test. But God, I pray that even as we may leave, God, God, that we will leave in a, in a place, God, in a heart and a desire to allow your kingdom to flow through us, to allow your mercy to flow through us, to allow your love to flow through us, allow your king, kindness to th flow through us, allow your gentleness to throw, flow through us. Lord, let us be the hands and feet of Christ. Let every word that we say, let every word that we say be sprinkled with goodness and mercy and love. Let every thought be captive by your, by your love and your grace, God. Renew us, I pray. And as we begin to usher in your kingdom, we will walk, watch a community. We will watch a family. We will watch a world that is turned towards you, towards you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. As you leave this morning, let's worship the Lord.